here with Havaya Mighty. What's up, Havaya? Not much. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Um, so what do you got going on right now? I know you did the Team Backpack Cypher, which which reached what two million views? Um, yeah, on on YouTube, I think it's coming up to eighty thousand as a full video. Um, on 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 Facebook, they chopped the individual cipher mm -hmm. uh, verses um, between Phoenix, Lex. Keisha Fresh and myself, and um, yeah, my independent portion got two million views, so it's probably sitting at two thousand. Really represented for the females, because females are always underestimated in the hip hop game. So you guys killed that cipher in thank you. Toronto. What's up? Thank you, thank you so much. Um, yeah, man, I was really excited to be invited as a part of that, and I think that had sparked from the CMW performance two years ago, and just that networking and building that relationship slowly over the years of people that were doing behind the scenes work and then when I was invited to do the cypher I didn't know how big it was going to be I didn't know who the other artists were going to mm -hmm. be I knew I was supposed to deliver a 16 and I did that and Delivered. and it turned into something so much bigger than and what then I thought. after you went to the states right for the team backpack you did another cypher rap video yeah yeah so um I believe what happened was they did a male team backpack cypher they also did a female team backpack cypher um and John River Claremont II, there were a couple guys that were, um, Rash Rascal, a couple guys that were yeah. part of the male one, and then I just named the ladies from the, the uh, female cipher, and uh, they chose two males and two females from the two individual ciphers to go to New York and uh, basically do a live cipher. So they, they grabbed John River, and um, Roshan actually wasn't a part of the cipher, they were unable to get one of the guys. Uh, they started with, I believe, KO, and there was um, just border issues. So um, uh, they ended up grabbing Roshan, and then Keisha and myself, and then we got to go to That's New York, sick. Brooklyn, and we got to, you know, perform on the stage and just basically let them know Toronto was doing our thing. What do you find the difference between Toronto and the States when performing? Did you find a difference or what was the vibe like in the States? Uh, in New York, they were excited to have Canadians there. And in Canada, they are excited to have Americans there. Really? I feel like that's it's a, like the opposite. Yeah. When I yeah. went to the UK, they were excited to have me there because I was from Canada. So I feel like people always like international. Like I feel like they do. I yeah. feel like they, for other artists, maybe it's something that's a little less competitive, you know, because it's like, well, you come from this alternate world, so I don't have to look at you as this thing that I'm competing with. And what's very interesting is I did a cipher with Huffington Post when I was out there as well, mm -hmm. which was dope. It was an incredible experience. But uh, there was a rapper, um, Carl Sharon, his name was. And he's from BX, and he was telling us that, like, as Canadians, we're going to get a different type of love than he would if he hops on the mic, because guys from BX are like, you're from here, bro. Like, it's, it's a, just a different type of love. Yeah. He was telling us that, and I was kind of wild by that. Cause we were I like, would think it would be the opposite. Cause I would think, too, because it's like I'm repping home. Like, especially with the States, they kind of, they seem to, like, support guys or girls that are from their hood. And that's something that I don't know Canada does the same way, or it doesn't Toronto, appear. Um, I mean, um, the States really, like, gets an artist and they support them and help them grow, but Toronto, uh, I don't know. Yeah, and that's always what I've been told. But when I was there, they were loving us. Like, they loved the, the I was rocking, like, I was rocking the flag, and they were loving it. They're like, you, you, you're Canadian, I remember seeing you. Whenever I tell people I'm from Canada, or from the States, oh, you know Drake? I was like, every time. you gotta bring up. You, you know, know Drake? right? You live in England? <laughs> hey, maple syrup? <laughs> yeah, we, we drink it. We drink it like water. <laughs> yeah, man. But it was um, it was interesting to hear him say that because I was expecting kind of the opposite of like, almost like a shun of like, you got, you're, you're Canadian, you kind of have to prove yourself to us. Yeah. Maybe it was where we were. I mean, the Team Backpack event in itself is supporting rappers. Maybe it was the fact that they recognized us from the visual. I don't know. You know, it could, it could yeah, just it could be, be that. Yeah. Um, so I don't necessarily want to say that, you know, I've realized when I went to the States that it's like this. Like, I don't know. It was only in one place in one kind of area of Brooklyn. So, I mean, that was just that one space. I don't know where, what it would be like everywhere else. <laughs>
you know, I kind of want to pay homage to the fact that that's the city where I kind of was able to dis discover myself and figure out what it is that I want to do. Um, even if I wasn't born in the city, like I've lived there for 10 plus years. So um, we're doing some really cool things to kind of like put Brampton on the map a little what's bit. What's going to be different about this album? What What's the style of the album? And um, you can tell us a little bit about that. I think what's going to be different about the album, first of all, it's a lot shorter, um, you know, it's it's more of an EP, and Bass Loud was an LP, so it's going to be six tracks, just under 20 minutes. Um, just give them a little sneak peek. It's, yeah, because a lot of people think Bass Loud was my first album, um, and I, that's my fourth project, so a lot of people weren't privy to the information of seeing what I do until now, and I think T-Backpack was, you know, thankfully responsible for a lot of really that. helped you, yeah. Helped me get my name yeah. out there, right? So, mm -hmm. like, some people, like the real diehards, they, they went and found the other projects I saw and people stuff. on my Facebook sharing it, like, you were all over my timeline. Yeah. Like, yeah, like, my dad's friends, my friends. Yeah, it. yeah, and, like, I, I think literally... my cousin in Barbados even shared your... Like, I have family out there, so maybe, you know, yeah, maybe. like, maybe you got over there a little bit, but yeah, like, honestly, like, it was an incredible um, opportunity to have that happen, and I think, I mean, I've been doing music for a while, but that kind of spearheaded what I needed to do with my business because there was so much attention on me all of a sudden. And it was like, what am I going to do with all of this attention? Like, am I just going to like say thank you or am I going to harness it and retain it for future work? And I'm like, I need to find a way to retain it. So that's where the social media game had to come up. I had to involve a few people on my team and get some, a little bit of assistance. And um, now I'm spearheading all of that with another project. And I'm doing that because I have a lot more attention. I have a lot of eyes on me and um i have people that are interested um i have funders that are just they're interested that's, that's you know the yeah just little 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 things that they're interested but they watch and they watch and the more you work and the more you network and the more people you meet the more opportunities start to fall into place with the stuff that you're already doing so always, i'm not it's always about getting involved into any little thing you can because you never know where something will lead you exactly it's no handouts but as long as you work hard things will happen things will happen when did you actually start getting into music because I think originally you you were wanted to be a singer, didn't you? I was a singer originally. And you were a singer, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. I took um, singing lessons for seven years to start. My parents put, I have three sisters yeah. um, and a little brother. And uh, three older sisters and a little brother. And my parents put all of us in um, music lessons except for my brother because he was not born. Um, but they all did piano and I did vocal. And we did it for years. We did competitive competitions at the end of every year. It was um, the Royal Conservatory of Music in Scarborough. And I used to go every Saturday and Sunday, and the weekend was dedicated to that. And I would get chow mein afterwards. And, you know, that was the thing that so we would do. So what made you switch from singing to rap? Um, well, I, 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 I still was doing the singing for seven years, and then we moved to Brampton. Um, so I think I was doing the lessons from between four and 11 years old. So when, when I was about 11, that's when we came here. Or not here, we're in Toronto right now, but yeah. to Brampton. Brampton. Um, and um, at that point in time... I didn't have the same occupy, the space being occupied on the weekends. Like I had this free time and I wasn't serving a purpose with music. So I, I gravitated towards rap. I don't know how or where. 50 Cent was a big part of that. I, I don't know. Get Richard Die Charm, man, all day. And oh, that, yeah, that album, that, that album was. Girl, okay, <laughs> to let me know. Down. Yeah. yeah, so basically. 50 Cent and Chingy, and there was a couple of dudes at that time. Like, I grew up not really being allowed to listen to hip hop, you know, as three sisters and then me, and it's just all yeah. women. My parents yeah. listened to reggae, and, and I grew it, up listening to hip hop because, like, my dad's a, pi a pioneer yeah, yeah, in yeah. hip hop game. So I grew up listening to it. I was listening to, like, Young Jeezy when I was four years old, so like, you rapping kind along. Of so grew I grew into Yeah, it. I grew into it. Yeah, for me, I fell into it. I guess I would say I fell into it. I yeah. definitely think, like, my cousin was always, like, in the headphones, and he would say any chance I got when I was like seven, six, I'd be like, hey, you headphones. Like, I don't remember, I don't remember any of this, but he tells me like, you, there was something about hip hop you always gravitated towards, but it was, I wasn't around it, you know, just the content and stuff like that. My parents weren't of that world, so they didn't, you know. Like, right was, now, are they supportive of your career? Yeah, and do they? Do they, they are. Like what you're doing? They, they are, but they were always supportive of music in general, right? Because they put us in those lessons. Yeah. But after. Um, we stopped, well, after we moved, we stopped doing the lessons, all of us, and I just started falling into rap. There was this website called lesbeef.com, and you could, like, do text battles, and you could do, like, webcam battles, and all these things, and I used to participate in all of it, and I, that's how I literally started, was just this website. Doing like, rap? Yeah, it wasn't, like, a lot of these, a I lot never of, heard of that. lesbeef.com, it probably still exists, but it was bigger at that time, but, like, it's interesting, because a lot of people, I feel, you know, they start in the real world, like, at school, and, like, um... Like, I know Shaq Claire was recently talking about yeah. the fact that he, you know, they were doing like the, rap the, the rap battles in the school and stuff. And, like, I mean, even in Brampton, they do that. But when I started, I was 12. 
and I was a female, so I definitely wasn't, you know, at school, after school. Like, my parents yeah, were very rap, strict. The whole rap battle thing is, I think it's more guys. Like, I don't know, in my high school, the guys do that. The guys I'm do always, that. I always, like... Um, I have a lot of guy friends and I I, I, I can relate to them more because they like hip-hop. I feel like they're more interested in that I'm a rapper than the girls. I always gravitate more. I find guys, I find that Guys are more true. into hip-hop, yeah. yeah. And then always, if I say I'm a rapper, first of all, when people meet me, they're like, oh, you're a pop singer, right? I'm like, no, I rap. They're like, oh, okay, show me. Okay. Like, girls always I... have to show themselves, but... That's, that's, that's another topic we'll definitely have to get into is the struggles that women have in the, in the industry, right? <laughs>